And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Nestor's games come in these pencil case type holders. Each one has a different symbol on the end, but don't let that fool you. There's some pretty neat games in here. Uh, there's certainly some really fun ones, although there's occasionally a game that they make that I'm not a fan of, and that's what we're talking about today. This one here shows a tie on the game, and the game itself is called Corporation. Ooh, the excitement as I unzip my pencil case. Well, Corporation has an, an, a neat looking idea, but it's really a brain burner of a game, a game that actually might cause your brain to explode into flames with how cerebral this game is. <laughs> Look at it. All right, well, here is the board, and at the beginning of the game, you put a bunch of tokens, three of each player's color, randomly all on this corporation board here. Each player will get three pieces of their color and the game begins. The object is to get your people all the way up to the top where apparently all you do is lounge around all day. Okay, so the very first thing you do on your turn is you're allowed to bring one of your people or you're allowed to switch any two of these discs. You say, what does it matter when why you switch them? Well, I'll show you. Hang on. So let's say I don't switch any. So I put this red one here in the blue room. I'm allowed to put one of my pieces starting in a room. At that point, I must make all possible promotions that can be made. So I look here. If red is on a blue space, which he is, he goes up one. Hooray! Now I need a red red. Well, there isn't one. Is there any other promotions that can be made? No. Now, there really isn't any way to check each promotion uh, physically. You just have to remember which ones you've used. But if it's possible to use a promotion, you can. So let's put the game mid-game here. As you move into a room, if there's already a piece in that room, you go on top of that piece. So let's take a closer look at how this might work. All right, let's say this is it, and now I'm yellow, so I bring on my piece on the blue space here. But before I do that, I switch the yellow and blue spots like that. I can do what I want, I can switch any two. So first, I have yellow on blue. So that one can move. So this one is done now. Now I can use any other one. Well, here's a green on red. So I must do that one if possible. And there's a green on green. Well, here's a green on green. I have to move that one up. Here's a blue on yellow. All right, there are no blues even showing. A yellow on a red. A yellow on a blue, we already did that one. A green on a red. We did that one and a red on a blue. So now I'm done. So the next player turn, who's red, he's going to try and figure out the best way to get his pieces up. So let's say, for example, here he switches this red and this yellow like this. So then he puts out his new piece here, and then he moves the red up, but he can't move it any farther. But he has to look, can he move any other pieces? Can this green on top of the blue piece move? Can this yellow on top of the green? How about this yellow and the blue? Yes, that one can move up. And he, has, he gets to pick which order to apply them in. If he messes up, other players can decide. Now this looks like it could be kind of thinky, and it really is, because you have to look at all seven of these possibilities, and if possible, you have to do all of them. The order you do them in is your decision, so you can set it up so that you don't have to do some. Actually, this is a one to four player game. A one player person game would be simply you trying to get everyone up to the top as quickly as you could. Uh, but you're trying to maneuver your people, and once you have all three of your people in the top, then you win. Maybe I didn't explain that very clearly, and that's because it's just a very difficult game to try to explain. You're just moving pieces up to the top. It's really an abstract strategy game. The whole people in the office doesn't matter at all. You can move a piece up if they're on top of the right color, and you have to be thinking forward the whole time. Okay, if I move the red piece there, that reveals the green piece who can then move. And if I move this piece here, that will cover him up so he can move again. And I'm telling you, if you play this game with anybody who even remotely takes time making their decisions, then you will want to burn the game in a roaring pit of fire because it's just going to drive you that crazy. Uh, I play the game with people who can make fairly quick decisions and it's still really, really bogged down. The solitaire game, uh, if you like puzzles, it might be amusing to see how fast you can do it, but 
I just didn't find it that interesting at all. There's some people this game is going to appeal to, people who really like to think and do a lot of forward moves in their head and colors and blah, 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 blah. I am definitely not one of those. I like games that make you think, but not games that make you cry after thinking. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.